everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to explain the XRP Ledger public server. Previously, we learned how to connect to the XRP Ledger with JavaScript and we used this client object and we passed in this link. This link is actually a link to a public server, the xrpcluster.com server. With a public server, we can submit transactions to the blockchain or read data from the blockchain. In this case, we are using the xrplcluster.com server. This is the JSON RPC URL to that server. The operator of this server is the XRP Ledger Foundation, the company behind the XRP Ledger. And the network that we're connecting to is the mainnet, which is the official network where all transactions occur. But there are other public servers that you can use to connect to different networks with different URLs. You can also build your own Rippled server so you can have your own connection point. This is recommended for regular use or for sustained or business use of the XRP ledger. But if you're just connecting for development purposes or learning to connect then you can use a public server but if you want to build an app for production you should build your own rippled server so that you'll have your own connection point to the ledger so that is what an xrpl public server is it's the starting point for how we can connect to the xrp ledger via our app hello everyone and welcome back in this lecture we are going to discuss how to debug JavaScript. Debugging is the process of solving errors or figuring out why your code didn't, didn't result in what you expected it to result in. So to debug JavaScript, the number one method is to use the developer console available on every web browser. So open your web browser to any web page. I'm using Firefox as my browser and this will work on any browser, but each browser may have a slightly different method for accessing the console. So you open your browser and then open your browser's developer tools by pressing F12, which means holding the FN key and the F12 key to open the developer tools, or go to the top right-hand corner of your browser and select more tools, then select web developer tools. This will pop open a tab at the bottom of your web page. And here you have access to an inspector where you can see different elements of the web page and you can even select different elements of the web page. You have access to the console, which is where you can read error messages that may occur or warnings. So in this case, I have some warnings in yellow. Error messages will be in red usually. You can also read logs. Logs will allow you to read out different logged messages that you printed or that were printed to the console. All right, so you can see information and debugging as well. So if you ever use console.log, then you'll see your results in the developer console. This is similar to on jseditor.com or online code editors where they have their own console. As well, in the web developer tools, you have a debugger. You can access your network. Uh, you can edit style of the page. For example, try out changing the style of the web page. You can check out performance, memory, and more. But the most useful one is the console. Here, you have a native JavaScript console. You can actually execute JavaScript in here. You can type in JavaScript. and you can get insight into what code is running on the page. So if something doesn't occur as you expected with your code, then you can look in the console to see what went wrong. And again, this is similar to the console tab on an online code editor. If you do get error messages that you don't understand in the console, then search them up online. There are many developer websites out there like Stack Overflow and GitHub where there are many answers. Odds are, if you have a question, you'll be able to find an answer with enough time doing the research on the answer. So those are some tips on how to debug JavaScript projects. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to connect to the XRP Ledger testnet with JavaScript. 
all business that takes place on the XRP ledger happens on the main net, which is the production network. The test net is a parallel network, one of two alt nets. There's the test net and the dev net. The test network has its own separate supply of test XRP, and it works the same way as the main net, but in parallel. And that way you can test out your projects without having to spend your real XRP. The DevNet is very similar, but it also includes beta features that are in development. You can get free test XRP from a faucet if you need to use XRP to make transactions. Then when you're ready for production, when your app has been tested, then you can connect to the main net instead of the test net. Let's check out how we can connect to a test network with JavaScript. So we're going to use similar code to what we used to connect to the main net. All we have to do is change the server. So instead of using xrplcluster.com, we're going to use s.altnet dot ripple test dot net. This is going to allow us to connect to the test network via a test server. And we can log out our response to verify that everything can still be executed correctly. You can hit run or wait a moment if the running occurs automatically. And then in your console, you will see an object returned. The type is a response and you can see the result object. You get the ledger object as well as the ledger hash, the ledger index, and validated. So you can see more information about the ledger as well as the transactions. So that's how you can connect to a test net instead of the main net. All you have to do is change your server connection point. Join me coming up next. We're going to continue learning how we can access the XRP ledger with JavaScript. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to look up an XRP ledger transaction with JavaScript. So we have our asynchronous function inside of the function. Let's connect to the main net using the XRPL cluster.com as our server. Then we're going to await for a connection to happen and we're going to get a response. The command being a ledger with a validated ledger index and we want to see transactions. Now suppose I want to get the first transaction from the response in the ledger. Well, we can console.log out the response.result from the ledger. Okay, so just make sure you spell console.log correctly and then you can hit run or wait for the results to be loaded automatically. Here we see that response.result allows us to access an object with a ledger. Then from this response.result, we can access the ledger object right here. And from it, we can access the transactions array. This contains an array of the transactions of the previous block. So we can get any of these transactions by their index. You can also get a transaction with the transaction hash. So I am going to log out my console response.result.ledger to verify that we can access the ledger property and we can access transactions from that ledger property and we can access whatever transaction at a certain index and then we will get the transaction hash returned. So we can save this as a variable called the transaction ID because that is what is used to represent each transaction. So now we have the transaction ID being stored. Then we can make a request to find a transaction at that ID or any ID if you already know the transaction ID. So we'll make a variable called response and we're going to await the API and make a request. This time the command is not going to be to the ledger, but it's going to be to the TX, which means a transaction. So I'm going to call this variable my transaction response. As well, we want to pass in what transaction? Well, we'll pass in the transaction ID. So this allows us to make a request to make a transaction command using a transaction ID. 
then we can console.log out the transaction response. So we can see the results of the transaction that we are inquiring after. So then hit run and you'll see you get an object returned. The result is an object that shows an account, the amount and the currency, the destination, the fee, the last ledger sequence, any memos that might be added, a sequence, a public key transaction type like payment, the date, a hash, in what ledger, and some metadata as well. So we can see the details about that transaction that occurred. So we learned that we can use the XRP ledger API to make a request to access a transaction. And then we can see the details of that transaction. So, so that's how you can look up XRP ledger transactions with JavaScript. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.